In this session, we will talk about the coalescent theory to model demographic processes and how recombination or reassortment events can affect phylogenetic inferences. The coalescent theory is a powerful extension of classical population genetics because it is a collection of mathematical models that can accommodate biological phenomena as reflected in genomic data. The emphasis in coalescent thinking is to view populations backwards in time by using the divergence observable in the population to estimate the time to the most recent common ancestor. This ancestor, depicted as yellow nodes in the tree, is the point where lineages come together, or coalesce, in a single biological organism. The main parameters that are estimated in coalescence analysis are the coalescence time, meaning the number of generations that have passed since samples share an ancestor, and the product of the mutation rate and the effective population size. Therefore, more diverse populations have longer coalescence times and larger coalescent effective population sizes than less diverge populations assuming the same mutation rate. Thus, one can use the pattern of coalescent events to infer the population growth dynamics over time. Let's assume a constant population size of n individuals with discrete generations and equal reproductive success. Here, each new generation chooses its parent from the previous generation at random. When this happens, the lineages are said to coalesce. The rate of coalescence is inversely proportional to population size. If you pick a random individual and trace their descendants forward in time, all the descendants of that individual will, with high probability, eventually die out. Here we have a sample genealogy of three sequences from a population of 10 individuals. Now we can clearly see when coalescent events occur and estimate the time for coalescence. A demographic function can be estimated from the genetic sequences by combining the phylogenetic and coalescent likelihoods. The probability distribution of times between coalescence events depends on the demographic function. Thus, the likelihood of the demographic function can be calculated given a specific phylogeny since the observed tree shape reflects historical population dynamics. Here, the number of lineages decreases at coalescence events and increases at sampling events. As mentioned earlier, different trees gives us insight into different population dynamics. The top left tree, where there is rapid bifurcation, sheds light into an exponential growth of the pathogen's effective population size. In the adjacent tree, we see that branching events occur not as rapidly, which is an indication of a constant population size. Trees can also indicate whether the pathogen is under selection, as we can see in the trees on the top right. In the top tree, we see rapid substitution of lineages over time, meaning that the pathogen is under high selective pressures and thus has to evolve to overcome these pressures. A good example of this is influenza viruses and the reason why we need a new vaccine every year. The tree on the bottom shows multiple lineages co-circulating, so there is no advantage of one lineage over the other. This is something that can be seen, for example, in the hepatitis B virus. Lastly, the topology of the phylogenetic tree can also give us an indication of the structure of the population. In this case, we have two hosts, red and blue, and we see that in the left tree, pathogens tend to cluster by host, whereas in the right tree, pathogens tend to cluster irrespective of host sampled. In this example, using genetic data of seasonal influenza H3N2 globally, we were able to recover changes in the viral population, that is, the number of infections over time. Black represents the mean and green the confidence intervals. We can see peaks in the northern hemisphere winter and small peaks in the southern hemisphere winter, which accurately represents the seasonality of human flu epidemics. 
Recombination and reassortment are events where there is exchange of genetic material from different strains. When this occurs, the topology superficially resembles phylogenies from an exponentially growing population. Ignoring recombination leads to a large overestimation of the substitution rate heterogeneity and the loss of the molecular clock. Topological incongruence, as seen in the trees on the left, where different genetic regions produce different phylogenetic trees, represents the strongest signal for recombination. Thus, a phylogenetic tree cannot appropriately explain recombination events. We can detect recombinants or reassortants via incongruences in phylogenies, but this can be a long and tedious process where it is necessary to build and compare phylogenetic topologies for multiple genes or genome regions. Fortunately, there are several algorithms that facilitate these kinds of analyses. Here we can see some examples of different algorithms for detecting recombination, such as Simplot, Bootscan, or 36. The recombination detection program by Darren Martin et al. offers a great package that includes many of these. Detection of recombinant allows us to identify sequences with these patterns and remove them from subsequent phylogenetic inferences. There have been efforts to develop models that incorporate recombination by Mark Suchard or Nicola Müller, but this can really only be used for a small number of sequences.